for you tonight. I don't even have to ask how everybody's doing, huh? Fantastic. Big show for you tonight. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. And I know you've heard me say this just a few times. Pork fat rules. <laughs> Do you ever wonder why? It's because hardly anything goes to waste on a pig. You get all those great cuts of meats and sausages and bacon and casings and pork rinds and even pickled pig's feet. In fact, I think we use everything but the oink. <laughs> and I think tonight you're going to see why, because I've got some great dishes with different pork that I'm going to show you. We're going to start out with making uh, sort of a little panini sandwich with prosciutto parma and pears. Oh, yeah, babe. And then we're going to serve that with a mixed salad with ladons. Where do you see that? That means crispy bacon. And then you got to have spare ribs, right? Spare ribs. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, happy, happy. Them spare ribs, I'm going to show you how to do a little southwestern kick, a little uh, southwestern barbecue sauce. I'm show you how we're going to kick them up a little bit. And then I'm going to show you how to make homemade andouille sausage. And then we're going to take the andouille, make a stuffing, stuff it in a double cup pork chop wrapped in bacon with ham hock gravy. Oh, yeah, babe. Right? And then, if that's not enough, Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Lab Band. Hey, like I said, pork fat rules, babe. We're using everything but the oink tonight, right here on Emerald Live. So excited. How are you, ladies? See, these aren't the cheap seats. Hey. Hi, sweetie. Welcome. Hi. 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 Welcome. How you doing, pal? Hey, well, Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Okay. All right, look, we've got this little pig map. <laughs> Can zero in on the pig map. Just kind of give you a little where all this stuff comes from. The top part of this here, see, this would be the head. This is uh, the sh what they call the cut. Is a sh this is where the shoulder butt comes from, or pork butts, but pork butts really come from the shoulder. I'm not making this up, really. I never could really figure that out, you know? Pork butt, but it comes from the shoulder. Anyhow, we're calling it shoulder butt today. And then there's the, uh, the shoulder or the, also the bottom, which is the, called a picnic. A lot of the hams come from there. You might hear of picnic hams. Then the prize possession, although really nothing's wasted with the pig. This top part would be the loin. That's where a lot of the fat back would come from, which covers really the loin, which is pork loins, pork chops, all those great cuts right there. Underneath that is the rib section. That's where all the different ribs come. And you're probably confused about, well, there's pork ribs, then there's St. Louis cut ribs, and there are all these different... They all come from here. It's just a matter of how the butcher cuts them, how much bone... And then, of course, underneath that is the bacon part of that. And it could be many t types of bacon, regular bacon, pancetta. And then this section here really is the hams, particularly this, this guy right here. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, you see what they do? They'll take that ham piece like that. And one of the prize possession in the ham world it's called prosciutto palma. It's from the, absolutely, it's from the palma region of Italy, and it's very special. It has to, the hogs have to be from there. That's why the cheese is so good, because the cheese is Parmesan Reggiano, because the water, they drink, the hogs drink the water from that, make the great cheese fantastic. Anyhow, prosciutto palma, got to age 10 months to two years, 
generally in the open air, in the Emilio Romana region. Fantastic stuff, prosciutto parma. We're gonna do a little panini right now, or a little sandwich, if you will, using prosciutto parma. So check it out. If you don't have a griddle like I have here, you can do this simply with a waffle iron at home or one of those toasters that are available right now. They even start making these panini machines. Basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to press it a little bit and get the heat going. So uh, let's get, let me get going here. I'm gonna cut some crusty bread first, sort of, oh, maybe an eighth of an inch. And I'll show you how we'll do one of these or two of these and then we'll knock out a bunch of them. So now I have the bread down on the surface. Talk about a snack. We'll take some soft butter and we'll season the outside of the, you could also use olive oil. We'll take a little soft butter like this on the outside of the bread. And then I've got slices of the prosciutto ham. I've got some pears. Because right now the pears are just starting to get ripe and getting into pear season very soon. So watch this. I take the buttered side, turn it over, take a little bit of prosciutto. Oh, man. Talk about. <laughs> then I take a little bit of that nice ripe pear and a little bit of brie cheese. You see? Then we'll take the buttered side like this and then we'll put it on our griddle right here and we'll start griddling those up. Now, they don't cooperate and uh, you, if we need to weight them, if we don't have enough weight, you can do it with weights, the little weights that go on there. You can use a saute pan, just <laughs> So one more, a little prosciutto. <laughs> okay, and a little ripe pear little brie cheese, butter side over here. Okay, we're gonna make a few of these and we're gonna get them on our griddle here. And you wanna toast both sides just until they get nice and crispy. The brie cheese starts to melt, get all ooey gooey. Ooh, love that. <laughs> okay, now with this, I'm gonna serve a mixed green salad with ladons. As I said earlier, that means crispy bacon, okay? So while I'm gonna knock out a few sandwiches, what I'm gonna do here, is take some bacon that I got cut in that, sort of julienne, small julienne cut. I think we need more of it. Yeah, never enough pork fat. <laughs> so you just kinda wanna do this sort of cut like this. See how I'm doing that? To make these ladons. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna crisp, crisp them up. Now, when we're done crisping our bacon up, we're gonna take the crispy bacon out, and then we're gonna show you real quickly how to make sort of a vinaigrette, a classic vinaigrette inside of that pan. And we'll use that with our mixed greens, serve with our little paninis. I'm gonna knock a few more out while we rock out with Doc Gibbs. Stick around, Doc Gibbs! Watching everything, everything, everything but the oink, 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 oink. Gibbs in the MLI band. <laughs> Master Cliff on keyboards. Lois on the horns. Yeah. Mr. Teddy on the drums. Doc yeah. Gibbs. Yeah. All right, so that bacon is getting nice and crispy. Here's what you can do, a cast iron pan. When in doubt, that worked really good to weight them things down. And we're ready to put this together now. Gonna take our little 
Sandwiches off. Look good, huh? See, they gotta be, they gotta be pressed like that. They just kind of get really good and happy. Folks, if you're just joining us, shame on you. Because we're like taking pork fat to the moon tonight here on Emerald Live. All right, so this is how quick it starts. Once you get that ladons nice and crispy like this. See, there's a little bit of this bacon oil in here. Sounds better than bacon grease. <laughs> grease is like what I use to like lube my car. Bacon oil <laughs> is what you rub on you. Now we'll make this quick little vinaigrette. We're gonna just add some shallots. Garlic is a little option. For me, it's never an option, but we're gonna add a little garlic in here as well. And you just don't, you don't wanna burn them. We're just getting, extracting the flavor out of there. A Little bit of salt. <laughs> Cracked pepper. And then, next thing we're gonna do is this. We're gonna add a little bit of Creole mustard to this. Some chives. And then I have some red wine vinegar. Wow, when you're doing these vinaigrettes, it's about three pots oil to one pot vinegar. So there's the vinegar pot. Now we'll take the olive oil pot, drizzle it in there nice. <laughs> Now, whisk that right in there. We're in there. I got some salad greens, a little salt, pepper on them. Take a little bit of that dressing. I'll take it all. Just lightly toss your greens, and we'll use that as a little salad over here like this. Okay. Some crispy bacon, or ladons. A little panini. Okay. There you have it. Beautiful. Should be that fast too, folks. I mean, that salad, you want to kind of do it that fast with the dressing, warm like that, the crispy ladons or bacon, little uh, prosciutto pear and brie sandwich like that, little panini, fantastic. All right. I've got some ribs. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> now, everybody thinks that you just, you know, you take, you buy ribs, you take them, and you either smoke them or you put them on the grill, and then it's like, forget it. So this is a great combination here. What I do is this. I take this stuff called liquid crab boil. They also make a spice pack of it, too. But the liquid I prefer for this kind of technique, water in a pot, crab boil. Now, this stuff will knock you out, so literally not too much. <laughs> Spicy. It's what we use for crawfish and shrimp. Oh, it's great. A couple of bay leaves. And then when that comes up to temperature a little bit, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take just a rack of spare ribs, right? We're just gonna sit them right inside there, let them get happy for about 15 minutes. A little salt. I'm so happy right now, I think I'm gonna do two. So you don't want to like boil them to death. Just let the temperature come up, let it simmer, let that flavor of the crab boil and the bay leaves, a little bit of the salt, 
Let it just sort of get in there about 15, no more than 20 minutes inside of the ribs. We're going to grill them, but I'm going to show you a different technique later on. So there's our ribs starting right there. Now, the Southwest barbecue sauce I was telling you about. I've got some onions that I started cooking down, and it's looking really good. Now to that, I've got this smoked jalapeno pepper. It's called chipotle. You can get them. They're in a little can, right? They're smoky, but they've also got a notch in them. <laughs> so what we're going to do is this. Look, after the onions cook, we're going to add chipotle pepper, garlic, right? Some dry mustard. This is that adobo sauce, which is basically more of the chipotle that's just been pureed a little. Lime juice. Then a little cane syrup. This is some steams. Oh, yeah, this is good stuff. Put that on a bumper and it'll taste good. <laughs> and then, of course, a little bit of tomato product or sauce or ketchup or a combination. And then I've got this red wine vinegar, a little concentrate, just a little bit. You need some acidity in there. You can't have all pepper, all sweetness. You've got to have a little acidity. So we're going to bring this up and let, let this simmer a little bit. Now, when the ribs come out of this 15, 20 minutes, out of this spicy water, what we're going to do, oh, we'll add a couple of bay leaves in there too. Can you smell that already? Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to make a rub to dry rub the ribs. When they come out of the liquid, we're going to pat them dry. Then we're going to rub them with this rub that I'm going to show you how to make. Then we slowly, slowly, we're going to start grilling these ribs, stacking them. I'll show you how we do that, OK? The problem is people go, then they go try to rush them. They go try to do ribs, you know, well, 30 minutes. I don't know. Have sweet corn. <laughs> it takes a little longer for the ribs. The rub is going to have brown sugar, chili powder, paprika, black pepper, some salt. Oh, relax. It's going to feed 60 people. <laughs> some cayenne pepper. A couple of notches there. OK? Now, going to mix this here. And this is going to be our rub, a little more salt. All right, so we've got our rub. The ribs are in. We come back. I'm going to show you what they look like, and I'm going to show you how we're going to kick it up. Another notch. Stick around. Back in. Gotta have your pork, man. I love pork. Pork fat rules, baby! Oh, Doc Gibbs in the Everlight Band! Oh, boy! They just ripped that song right down 11th Avenue. Welcome back, everybody. Emma Lagasse here. Happy, happy, because pork fat rules tonight, let me tell you. <laughs> 15, 20 minutes. Take them out, and you really want to pat them dry. And they kind of look just sort of like boiled ribs. They're not too happy right yet, but they're going to be. So. What we're going to do now is we're going to take that rub. We're going to start sprinkling that rub. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> a lot of it is going to burn off, so it may think, you may think that I'm applying a lot here to this. Turn over the other side. Rub. 
Now, you get them rubbed like this. You go put them on your grill. If you don't have a grill, no problem. I tell people this, they think I'm absolutely like fell off another planet. If you don't want to do it on the grill, don't have a grill, or it's like cold and you don't want to go outside, what I'll do now is I'll rub them. I roast them in the oven for about 10 minutes, take them out. Then I take my sauce and I smear the sauce all over both sides of the ribs. I wrap them in plastic wrap. Then I wrap them in foil. Then I bake them in the oven for an hour and a half. And no, the plastic wrap is not going to melt. And the reason for that is, is that the moisture of the pork ribs and the moisture in the barbecue sauce, it's not going to melt the plastic wrap. But it keeps them so moist and so delicious. So try that. All right. Now, we're going to rub this one here. One of the great things that we have, particularly sort of in the country in Louisiana, like in Lafayette, Opelousas, it's a great place, great food. They have one of these things that they do with the skin of pork. See, and then you stack them like this. You can stack them up to the moon, okay? The thing is, what happens, first of all, the heat's not like you know, jacked up to 9,000 degrees. It's like a medium, and if you're using charcoal, just adjust it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start rotating them and we, what they call stacking. So we turn the other side over and then we turn the side over and then we put that side down and we keep stacking them. What happens is the juices start running into each other, especially if you got a few of them on there. And you don't worry about the barbecue sauce until the very end, okay? Now, I cooked the barbecue sauce that we made for about 20 minutes. And some people like to strain it. To me, it doesn't matter. At this point, I just want ribs. <laughs> but if you want to strain it, you can strain it. See, it looks like a little bit clearer barbecue sauce being strained. To me, I don't mind all the lumps and stuff in there for me, so. So uh, you got a choice there. So as I was saying to you about these, they do these cracklings. You get them hot in a little brown sack, seasoned. Whew. I get two bags, one for each pocket. <laughs> oh, yeah. What it is is that sort of the fat back that gets the, the skin you get it good and cold. And then I just sort of roll this like that. It's got to be good and cold. And then what you do is you just kind of sort of cut them in little strips like this. Now they'll sell these in some road, little road stands. See that? Got them in strips like that. Or they'll make them big in little squares sometimes. So they kind of like fold over. They go inside of vegetable oil. And I'll show you these crack ones in a second, what they're going to look like. Now, here's what we do. We take this side off, this side over, and then we're going to stack it. And then we're going to switch them around. We're going to keep stacking them. And then I'll show you what they look like. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. Do 
I love pork, baby. I was raised on pork. Gotta have my pork. Pork fat rules! <laughs> Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. Just gonna kind of salt a little bit now these cake, little cracklings that I made right there. Oh, talk about a snack. Oh well, yeah, man. Try one of them. Thank you. You start doing these, people, they'll always be at your house. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Now, the next thing, we keep rotating, stacking the ribs, barbecue sauce is strained. Andouille sausage, a spiced Louisiana pork sausage, used in a lot of dishes, from jambalaya to a dish that I'm gonna do later to breakfast, you name it. Here's what it is. The pork butt is used, mostly trimmed, and a little bit of pork fat. You wanna cube the meat, using the pork butt, maybe in about an inch cubes or so. And the whole thing, as I said, it's a seasoned pork sausage. So you gotta season it. What I like to do, in the restaurants, we've been making andouille for 15 years plus. You gotta season it. What's the seasoning? Cayenne pepper, cumin, chili powder, crushed or cracked red pepper, black pepper, a little bit of that essence stuff, fresh garlic, okay? And then, a little bit of filet, ground filet, ground sassafras, right? Filet. It's what's used for gumbos. Then, folks, you want to toss this up really, really good, and you want to let it, what's called, cure or marinate like this in the icebox, at least overnight, a whole day if you got it. Okay? That's how simple it is, except now we got to make it into sausage. So let me show you that. Once it cures, then the whole thing is to use either a sausage grinder or you can do these attachments like this, and then we'll start grinding it. Once it cures, we'll begin to start grinding it. What I do is the little trick that I do here when I'm making this Sometimes I'll grind it twice. Every now and then, what you want to do when you're grinding it is you want to add a little bit of pork fat. Because it can't be all lean. It's got to have a little fat. Like 90-10 is really lean sausage. But that will push to help push the meat through. You with me on that? Okay. So after you grind this thing, that's what I have here, and you can decide how ground, some people like it a little finer, they'll, they'll run it through again. But now what you do is I either form patties or with casings from the hog, you can make sausages like this here. So you can make link sausages or patties. The next step from there is it's gotta be smoked a little bit. And the great thing about these house stovetop smokers, they take hardly any time, maybe 30 minutes they take. So I've got some hickory is what I like to use. I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to add my patties and smoke this for about 30 minutes. Got to be smoked, okay? That's the difference with andouille sausage and a lot of different pork sausages. Yes, they're fresh, but this is also smoked. Chorizo is smoked. Hickory wood, smoke it, stovetop smoker over here. Smoked andouille sausage, homemade, nothing like it. When we come back, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it. Stick around. We'll be right back.
love pork. Pork? Who doesn't eat pork? folks getting a little smoky in here after those ribs start cooking you see you start getting a lot of good color like that all right that's when you want to start basting them about the last half hour you don't want to burn them okay that's when you want to start basting them with that barbecue sauce nice brush like that matter of fact there are some that the awesome kitchen here at Food Network we cut some we had too many people drooling. <laughs> so you all have some, uh, some of the ribs are, have gone out, circulate, help yourself. Then what we're gonna do now, folks, you see you baste them, we're gonna turn it over, slowly again. We're gonna baste the top of that. Last half hour, okay, is what we wanna do. Last half hour, baste them up, they're gonna be fantastic. Now, speaking about a half an hour, our andouille sausage patties smoked okay now you're ready to use it stuffings all kinds of things that you want stuffed shrimp casseroles you just kind of crumble it up like this you see and this is the one that's not in the casing if it was in the casing well then what you'd have to do is you'd have to cut through the casing let me show you one of my favorite all-time stuffings i take a little bit of olive oil in a skillet and take that smoked on dewey sausage. Start cooking it. Now, a lot of it is already cooked already, so you don't have to cook it that long. See how the patties are? Then you can wrap them individually, put them in the ice box. And they'll, they'll keep in there at least a week, okay? No preservatives, none of that stuff. Fantastic, good smoky flavor. Now, to the andouille, I'm gonna add onion, bell pepper, and celery, which we call as the trinity, right? A little salt. <laughs> now, once that cooks, the trinity that is, for about four or five minutes to start getting the flavor out of there, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some garlic and we're gonna add a little bit of fresh parsley. And then I got some cornbread that I just crumbled up. We're gonna add some cornbread in there. So it's this andouille cornbread dressing is what we've got working here right now. Now, once everything gets cooked up, how are the ribs? Once this all gets cooked up a little bit, what I do is I add just a little bit of chicken broth. You could certainly add water if you want. Just to get it moist as a stuffing, I turn the heat off and we're gonna let it get cool. That's what I got right here. Once it gets cool, so you could do this the day before if you really wanted to. Now, I've got our stuffing. Here's what we're gonna do. You get these like real pork chops. Right? Right? Yeah, real pork chops. It's not a pork chop for like a two-year-old, you know? <laughs> real pork chop. What we're gonna do, you gotta have at least a couple of inches, an inch and a half. What I like to do is I like to go where the loin is here and make a little pocket like this. See that? Just make a little pocket. And then, you take that cornbread on dewy dressing, and we're just gonna spoon some right inside of there, you see? Oh yeah, just, I just get it, look. <laughs> Playing around over here, you know? <laughs> Stuff it really good. How much till it can't take anymore? <laughs> now, see, they're all happy. Now, 
what I do to make them even a little happier is I take a few pieces of bacon. Hey, I told you this was gonna be a pork fat show tonight, right? Then what we'll do is we take, put the pork chop over here, and then what we do is we're gonna just sort of wrap it a little bit. See that? Oh, this one, no need. There's that one there. We call this hogtied. <laughs> Just hogtie your pork chops, they'll be happy. Get the bacon in there real nice. And then what I do is I stop browning them. Season them up. We'll stop putting them in a little Dutch oven like this. And then what I like to serve this with as they start to cook, these things here, smoked ham hocks. Oh man, put these in your collard greens, in your beans. I sleep with these. <laughs> oh yeah. You just put one right under your pillow, you're out like a light. When we come back, another knock. <laughs> Up. Ham, ham, ham. Ribs. Barbecued pulled pork sandwiches. Hey now! Fuck Gibbs! <laughs> Master Cliff, Lewis, Teddy on the drums, and of course, Dr. Gibbs in the house. And we've been cooking everything but the oink tonight. <laughs> So I sauteed the pork chops that were wrapped in bacon, just to kind of give them even a little bit more flavor. Oh, wait. Ham hocks, I was telling you earlier, I didn't get enough, enough in there about these things. I love these things. I use them for all kinds of things. What I did is I submerged these in water with a little onion, a little celery, bay leaf, covered them about twice as the amount and brought them up to a boil and let them simmer. And they simmer and they simmer and simmer and simmer. And then they start, like an, after about an hour and 15 minutes, the meat starts coming undone from the bone. You catch my drift? And then it's simmering and simmering. And I take that liquid, then I sauteed some onion, and a little more garlic, and I sauteed that with some veal stock and reduced it down. And then I shredded all of the meat from the ham hock and put it in there. Now I have like a ham hock gravy. <laughs> oh, kill myself. So you wanna roast these chops until they're still pretty moist. And then basically what I do, just take the chops that are stuffed on a little platter like this. And maybe you could serve mashed potatoes on the side. Oops. Or you could serve, we would serve a lot of rice, okay? And then what I do to finish it, when I'm getting ready to take them to the table, I just take that hot ham hot gravy, okay, and just Can you feel the love in here? So, especially, 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 especially if you have like rice, it's a beautiful thing. And then I just take it as very simple garnish, maybe like some chives, something like that, folks. And there you have it, a little stuffed pork chop like that. Red beans and rice, 
These are great in red beans and rice. Pickled pork meat, too. That's a pork thing. Speaking about pork, prosciutto, pear, brie cheese, paninis with a little ladon salad. Homemade andouille. Now you hopefully can take that with you. And uh, great for stuffings, like I said. Double cut pork chop stuffed with cornbread andouille dressing and ham hot gravy. Cracklings. Hey, what a pork fest we had. I'm Emeril Lagasse. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. And I'll see you tomorrow, everybody.